Hey y'all, Tia Cherie here. Welcome back to my channel, a place for budding entrepreneurs looking to grow their personal brand and elevate their mindset. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you again for coming to check out another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about a skill that many of us struggle with, time management. In this video, I will be giving tips and tricks on how to manage your time more effectively. Specifically, how to manage your time if you have a full-time job and a side hustle. So whether you already have a full-time job and side hustling on the side and looking to get some more insight on how to do it better, or maybe you have a full-time job and you're thinking about starting a side hustle, but you're not really sure if you can manage both. If either of those sound like you, make sure you keep watching and stay tuned. In this day and age of 2020, having just one income more often than not just does not cut it. Especially if you live in a big city like myself, New York, cost of living here is just tremendously high. There's numerous people out here side hustling, working multiple jobs just to make ends meet or to live more comfortable, save a few dollars, take some vacations, do whatever it is that they need to do with their extra income. So in order to alleviate that, there's so many people that are picking up side hustle. But with side hustling, you have to have a skill of time management. Unfortunately, we don't get any more hours in the day just because we have extra things to do. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, you definitely need a few extra hours in the day. But honestly, we really, really don't. What we need to do is be more efficient with the time that we have. Tip number one, get up early. I know you don't wanna hear it. I know this is the dreaded thing that nobody wants to do. You barely wanna get out of bed in the morning now when your alarm clock goes off. You definitely don't wanna get up an extra hour or two hours before you normally do, but you must. And if you really want to get a better control of your time and your day, then you'll sacrifice those few extra moments of Z's to make sure that you can get up and get things done. Who wants to wake up before the sun is even up? I'm sure you don't and sometimes I don't either. But in order to make the most of the time that we have, we simply must get up earlier. For example, if you wake up at 5 a.m., yes, 5 a.m., yes, before the sun is even up, yes, before that bird even gets the worm, and spend one hour working on your business, you are setting yourself ahead way more than you realize. Just think about it. Say you wake up 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. You spend one hour working on your business. That is now five hours that you worked on your business for the week. That turns into 20 hours for the month. That 20 hours for the month, you multiply that by 12, and now you have 240 hours that you worked your side hustle. That's literally one whole month of time that you added to working just your side hustle. That little minor change, yes, it's a lot in the beginning, can really have a huge effect on your year and the time that you can commit to your side hustle without having to mess up anything else that you have going on. I know you guys hate to hear it, but trust me, listen to me, believe me, I am a living example that it works. I get up at 5 a.m. and I spend at least that hour from five to six before I go to the gym working on my business. Waking up early is definitely one of the best tips to making sure you can balance your full-time job and your side hustle. Tip number two, work on your lunch and on your breaks. If you're anything like me, and don't judge me, but I like to eat my lunch in my car. I like to eat away from all of my coworkers, away from my desk, and just out of the building and giving myself time to just be by myself to recuperate from whatever has already happened in the day. 
Now, as much as I enjoy this moment to myself, this is also a time for me to get some work done and be productive in my side hustle. So whether that means making follow-up phone calls or reading or planning out some information or some content, whatever it is, we can use that time to be more efficient. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't have to do this every day. You can have your days where you just sit and eat in peace or you take a nap or whatever it is that you like to do on your lunch break, but taking maybe one or two days out of the week to do something related to your business can now give you another step up on being more efficient with the time that you have. So say you have an hour lunch break. If you woke up at 5 a.m., like I told you to, you already had one hour there. And if you have an hour lunch break and you work during that lunch break, now you have two hours that you spent on your side hustle and it's not affecting any of your other responsibilities. Tip number three, create a schedule to where you can commit to two to three hours a day for working on just your side hustle and you follow the first two tips, you've already gotten two hours of the work done, which technically would mean that you have now satisfied tip number three. You see how simple that was if you follow directions? Obviously, I know that some of those things might not work for everybody. Now, when I say every day, I don't literally mean seven days a week. But if you're the type of person who wants to work on your side hustle, say five days a week, then whatever five days those are, you take two to three hours of that day and make sure that you have that dedicated just to your side hustle. Now, if you like me and you work kind of like a regular nine to five schedule, my schedule is actually 8, 15 ish to 5 p.m. So for me, I like to wake up early in the morning. So I already get my hour in when I first wake up in the morning. I work on my lunch break, which gives me another 45 minutes or so. And then I tend to do another two hours or so when I get home every day. That's how I work my schedule out. So if that's something that can work for you as well, make sure you take advantage of it. With creating the schedule, I would definitely advise to try to time block. So basically get a calendar, whether you use Google calendars or whatever calendar system that it is that you use, make sure that you schedule in the time for this. Now, it's very easy to say, oh, when I get home from work, I'm going to do some work from six to eight. And then you get home and it's six to eight and you done cook dinner, you done help the baby with the homework, you did everything else but do the work. And that's because you didn't really set the time aside to do just that. So take a moment and put it on your schedule. Do remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So make sure that those things are on your schedule so you can visually see them and you can have a reminder of what it is that you need to do. Maybe you do an hour in the morning and an hour at night. Whatever your schedule provides for you and whatever your schedule allows for you to do, then do it. Tip number four, work on the weekends. Now, I know at this point you probably like, girl, when am I gonna rest? You telling me to wake up at the crack of dawn, to work through my lunch, to stay up till three in the morning working some more. Like, when am I going to get a break? Now, I'm not saying you're never gonna get a break, but the weekend might not be the best time for you to take that break, especially if you work Monday through Friday. Is I understand that the weekends are usually your relaxed time and your time with family. But if you are trying to start a business, run a business, create some extra income from yourself, there are gonna have to be a few sacrifices that you make in order to get to your goal. Well, that just may mean having to not sleep in on Saturday mornings and getting up and getting to work. Most of us are in the beginning of our entrepreneurship journey. So we're what they call solopreneurs, which basically means everything falls on us. This is a solo operation. There's nobody else here working with me. So if I don't get it done, it's just not going to get done. 
but in order to be able to get these things done i do have to sacrifice some of my chill time or my relaxation time and i have to turn that into work time say you couldn't commit to any of the other tips i gave you you're not waking up early and you're taking your nap on your lunch break fine do what you gotta do but at least if you use the weekend to dedicate this time you will still be able to make sure that you are level with the people that are waking up at 5 a.m so for example say you wake up on saturday morning at 8 a.m and you work until 1 p.m you have now gotten your five hours in in one day as opposed to over five different days and you still off early enough to go to brunch and have a few mimosas to me that sounds like a win-win situation i don't know about you but i love a mimosa especially after being productive now say that you're able to do this on saturday and sunday now you've dedicated 10 hours to your business and you're doing well you're doing exactly what you need to do but you're just doing it in a more condensed form and that's okay like, like i said in the last tip you have to do what works for your schedule there's no right or wrong way to do it it's just making sure that you're using the time that you have and using it efficiently. And I would also say, being that the weekend is typically time that we like to use for our family, you can still take that five to 10 hours and break that up. So for instance, like my example earlier, instead of maybe doing eight to one, maybe you just do eight to 10.30 and then you go about your day. Later on that evening, once the kids are asleep, maybe you do another two and a half hours then that way nobody's losing out you're still being productive and getting your work done but you're also still able to be there and be present for your family so it's a win-win situation for everyone and last but not least tip number five ask for help or hire someone to do what you're not good at now this final tip is definitely a lifesaver that's if it's possible for you to do it this allows you to focus on the things that you are actually good at and enjoy doing without being bogged down or overwhelmed by doing all these other tasks that you have no idea what you're doing a simple example of this would be building a website now as soon as you started your business one of the first things you probably learned that you had to do or what you should have is a website but what if you never had a website before? What if you know nothing about graphics or setting up a website or coding or any of that stuff? Do you really want to spend hours upon hours upon hours learning how to do this? Using that time to sit there and try to learn how to do all of these things, especially if it's not something that interests you or something that you even want to do is not going to be productive. Now, I understand that it may not be in everybody's budget to hire someone. Like I said, more often than not, you're doing a side hustle because maybe you're trying to make ends meet. So now spending hundreds of dollars to get a website made for example is not something that you can afford to do but what I will say is these days there's numerous options that you can use that can also be cost effective you can use websites like Fiverr where there are a bunch of different freelance artists that can build your website for you just think of the logistics of how you want it to run and give a simple idea of how you want it to look then take your idea and go to Fiverr and you can get different quotes from different freelancers and pick the ones that may be in your budget. Yes, you're gonna have to spend a few dollars, but there's definitely ways to make it more cost effective than spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars, especially in the very beginning. Shoot for perfection on your first website. Trust and believe over time your website will evolve, your ideas will change, your content will change, things will just have a natural course of progression and you'll wanna upgrade your website anyway. So you might as well just start with something simple and efficient, still nice, I'm not saying it's something rinky dink, but something simple and efficient to where you're not being bogged down by not being able to release because your website isn't like absolutely perfect. If you doing that side hustle like you should be, whether your website is AAA++++, 
somebody will still support you because they see the value that you get. So those are all the tips that I have for you guys. I hope you found that information beneficial. If there's anything that you would add to those tips, please make sure that you leave them below in the comments and also let me know what you think about them. Are there any of them that you love, some of them that you hate? I'm pretty sure y'all gonna say that y'all hate waking up early. Or if you have any other tips that you feel are beneficial that help you balance between your full-time job and your side hustle, be sure to leave them in the comments below. So make sure you guys stay tuned for my next video. It's gonna actually be wrapped up in what we talked about in this video and that is going to be my morning routine. So if you guys like this video, make sure that you subscribe subscribe, like, comment, share, and make sure you turn on your notification bell so that you're notified of every time I upload. I upload new videos every Tuesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you guys are here to check out my next video and talk to you soon. Bye.